And it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Tunde Kola Willie joins us via phone this morning. He's a legal practitioner. Tunde, it's good to have you join us. Good morning, my sister. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining. Uh, we start off with the leadership. On the leadership newspaper, as reconciliation process drags, Wiki hits PDP again, says party towing path of failure. Mm. Uh, that's what it is. And there's also another comment that was attributed to him, and he said, what will he profit him, you know, if he joins the APC? Well, on the needs of the leadership, the board caption on the leadership, you find warrants against Abuja politicians polarizing the party, asks Atiku to scrutinize supporters' electoral value. Nigerians are getting tired of the situation. And uh, that's what you find. Another one says, as a caption, Leadership Foundation Chairman, Nda Azaya Bag's Blueprint Posthumous Award. Okay, not very relevant for us at the time. Uh, seven Zamfara family members die after vegetable meal. Mm. I mean, it feels like there's something about food poisoning recently because you have one or two persons whose meal has been contaminated. IBB at 81, Bullet has no ethnic, religious bias. Let's unite against insecurity. Uh, I remember when my grandmother talks about experiencing the war. It's not something that anyone who wants to experience. And so, you know, the bullets will not discriminate where not you're from. It's not a good thing. And uh, we should guard against it. Of course, you have a stakeholder speaking. Strike, ASU federal government meeting ends in deadlock. Nigeria to save two trillion naira from malaria elimination. President Mohamed Buhari is saying, economy, insecurity, orders, top agenda as governors meet today. And that's it on the leadership newspaper. Let's go to the next newspaper on our table. And of course, uh, this time uh, we're talking about, not about the leadership, but we're looking at the Punch newspaper. Um, the headlines on the front page of The Punch are quite interesting. The paper leads with this one, Atiku, a PDP crisis. Uh, Atiku Wiki's men hold peace talks on Friday. Uh, are we not tired about, <laughs> about this? Uh, some people are tired, but I'm not tired. Uh, it was quite interesting to hear some of the things that the governor of River State has said in retail, recent times. Very, very strong words. So I think the politician, um, I guess, rather, will tell us some more about this. PDP crisis, Atiku and Wiki's men hold peace talks on Friday. The writer to that, a party that wants to win election cannot be involved in fighting. Rivers governor, uh, Atiku's camp wants meeting to hold in Abuja. Fintiri leads delegation, says sources. If I were Atiku, I would take next flight to Port Harcourt and close this chapter. Ohua Mbuwa saying it. Well, Ohua Mbuwa may have a, a point because the picture, the recent picture from Wiki's uh, sprawling mansion in, on, on Ada George Road in Port Harcourt is a private residence, but some Rivers will call it government house uh, the new government house. It shows um, some, you know, former governors and present governors in PDP uh, with Peter Obi and the WK in a very nice and friendly picture. So uh, they need to move fast in the PDP. Maybe. Uh, I will see, we'll see what I get says. The next one from the punch. Power generation falls by 503 megawatts. Workers threaten strike. ASU FG meeting deadlocked. Lecturer stage walkout. Bandits IPOB members threats to 2023 elections, Dambazo, or Dambazao saying that one. Uh, why 7 million diasporans, other Nigerians, unregistered? This is uh, according to INEC. U.S. group opposes Benin Brown's return uh, to Nigeria. 30 children, 144 Libya returnees arrived in Nigeria. Uh, you can see a picture of them on the front page of The Punch. That's still an issue and one to keep an eye on. Four students celebrating was at Lagos Beach drown. It's a, a heartbreaking one. Four students celebrating was at Lagos Beach drown. Murdered Mapoli Queen's corpse found on her birthday, it's according to her friend. An FIIRO restores demoted officer's salary amidst fraud trial. Uh, these are the headlines on the front page of The Punch. Well, let's take a look at the Daily Trust newspaper has been made available by a paper vendor. No respite for operators as aviation fuel hits 903 naira. That's per litre. Nigerian Sean, air travel over high cost of tickets. I mean, who would not 
Lagos Abuja return flight now 200,000 naira. Abuja Kanu, uh, you have uh, 160,000 naira. And experts predict higher fare airlines caught flight. Month after month, the National Assembly resolution not yet implemented. These are the riders. I mean, I wonder what would happen because we're approaching the festive period. And, you know, usually a lot of persons would like to go back home and celebrate, you know, with family, friends, and what have you. It, it will just become, uh, you know, a difficult time. We also saw pictures emanating. I mean, there were pictures from the airport where you see the airport's very scanty. Uh, it just shows that it's a lot. Well... We get to Atiku, voters not, rumor peddlers will decide your fate. And uh, 2023, Boni Dambanzoa asks Nigerians to show on religious sentiment. Matawale okays death penalty for kidnappers, bandits, and informant. Uh, this quiet in Kwankwasil's NNPP, Shakarao decides on next exits. Again, abductors of Nasser or commissioner demand 100 million naira. Uh, just before we move away from the Daily Trust newspaper, malaria burden on Nigeria to reach 2 trillion naira by 2030. That's what uh, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is quoted to say. That's the much we can take this morning on the Daily Trust. Uh, let's move over to the nation before we bring our guests in very quickly we'll run through the headlines on the front page of the nation the big one there as you can see 2023 disquieting pdp as obi meets wiki or tom others uh party on self-destructive path says rivers governor ayu must go uh rain to pound lagos ogun Oshu or your own do ekiti edo all right, we're looking, it doesn't look like that <laughs> these days. Maybe we are on the, what we call the August break. Uh, but we have to prepare for that. This is what they, as the authorities are saying. Conditions of remaining 27 train attack victims critical, says negotiator. Jais, okay, we'll leave that one. Don't lose hope, IBB tells Nigerians. I'm sure this as he clocks 81. Um, happy birthday to him. Insecurity, terrorist bandits are threat to 20 23 polls, says Dambaza. Our governors meet today on insecurity. Lagos stakeholders seek total ban on Okada. Um, more from the nation, federal government ASU talks deadlocked. Federal government ASU talks deadlocked. Thug shoots four in Ondo. Uh, Nema receives 174 Libya uh, returnees. And the final one was from the nation. Ocean police intercept 14 suspects, 12 motorcycles in truck, and 14 drowned in Lagos. Let's bring in at this point um, our guest, uh, Tunde Kolawale, uh, legal practitioner. Thank you very much for your time, Barrister. Um, let's start with Wiki and the PDP, and of course, Atiku Abubakar. Um, Atiku has been told to hop on the next uh, plane, as we can see on the front page of the Punch newspaper um, to Port Harcourt. Hop on the next plane to Port Harcourt, go see Wiki, close this chapter out. Um, do you agree with that, looking at what's been happening and the meetings Wiki has been holding in recent times, days? Well, I agree that Elijah Atikwa Wubaka require to reconcile with Wiki and all other persons who may be agreed in the PPP when you are putting a major election like the 2003 election you cannot succeed when you do have a divided um, uh, house in your hand so to that extent I agree that the reconciliation is the very prime in a larger people of workers agenda and we have seen how that has worked wonders within the APC Immediately as he was here emerged as the presidential flag bearer of the APC, he went around all the other consultants trying to make peace with them. And I'm aware from some inside sources that that reconciliation process is still continuing. And the man has even carried the reconciliation process higher and further and deeper than what he did after the summary of the APC by missing out uh, people like UK and some of these other disgruntled elements uh, within some of these other political parties. But what I don't agree with is that we should take the next flight to Potako. For me, that would be an appeasement. A party member, all the different political parties, 
have constitutions, rules and regulations which provide for how members to behave their conduct and their responsibility towards the political party. We can we seem to have uh, forgotten the obligations that we hold the PDP under the constitution, under rules and regulations, and under ethics of a uh, uh, practice of a uh, policy. Like I said before, the man is now behaving like an envelope who has been shot by another by hunter, but it's not within the it's not yet inside the pouch of the of uh, of uh, the hunter. That is is behaving like a wounded um uh leopa, I mean an antelope. And he also giving people the impression that the family has borrowed money or emptied the bank to be able to contest that the primary the presidential family of the PDP. Plus that if it's next deep in debt, he will require to pay back that debt. And how does he say pay it back? He has to put pressure on a large article of butter on the PDP, put heat on them so that they will begin to negotiate with him and consist so many things to them and make it possible for facilitator is going to receive his uh, indebtedness. And you and I will know indebtedness may not just be in terms of monetary uh, means alone, it may have cut across some of the promises it may have made to some people. So rather than appease wicked, I will prefer so that the party and the like of Kovaka to whip him into line. I have a very strong feeling as I like to think of as the resources, as the rich, as the experience, as the connection, to win the PD, to win the presidential election, with or without wiki. I have that strong belief. You see, when you are fighting a war, you will have a strategy, you will have a tactic. I like the people of water, politically speaking, he is both a master of strategy and that of tactic. All right. Uh, Tunde Kolawale, let's uh, take a look yeah. at the leadership newspaper. Uh, it's about the federal government and ASU. And we know that ASU had been on this strike uh, since the 14th of February, 2022. And just yesterday, there were feelings that it might just be better. They would come to a consensus or some level of agreement. But unfortunately, that meeting did not come to uh, some any kind of agreement. W what are your thoughts? I mean, time is actually going. Uh, the calendar My year sister, has been distorted for the mm, student, and what does this really mean? What we are having people? in the area of higher education is a tragedy of monumental proportion. That the university, I mean, that our university will be short term for upward of six months, and then we'll be unable to find solutions to the problems in that area. And don't forget, go and do your analysis. Since they return to this civil rule, Go and do your fat fine. You will be shocked about the numbers of days that are soon, and generally the higher institutions in Nigeria have gone on strike in the return to this civil war. And I keep saying it, it is not democracy as such. It is not what we put in the National Assembly in Abuja, in the respective state of assembly, or in the executive arm of government, both at the local government, state level and the federal level that translates into development. The prime force for development is education. After education, you need visionary leadership. After visionary leadership, you need very vigilant followership. All of the countries of the world that have developed, their development rests on education. Go and check the U.S. Go and check Britain. It is the Harvard, it is the Cambridge, Tunde it is the MIT and all that. Tunde that Kalawale. All right. So when you neglect education and you are unable to find solutions to there and all that, you are undermining your own development. Tunde Kalawale, let's, 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 let's come back to some of the issues now. I mean, we, ASU, right. I mean, if you look at the, the concerns of ASU, at the end of the day, uh, it, yes. it's financial. Some of the concerns are financial. You know, apart from the payment yes. platform system, uh, which they have also asked, but really improving funding, uh, some sort of increment of salary, an agreement that was made in 2009. And to be very honest, the federal government has been saying that uh, they don't have what it takes, you know, 
no funds, lack of funds. Mm. That's what it is. Now, the, the meeting with the federal government, uh, the, the BRICS committee that was being set up, uh, it, it was reported mm. that why there was no form of agreement was because there was no new offer on the table. And the federal government mm. had asked, asked you that the strike should be called off because their consents will be reflected in the 2023 20, budget. And that's what it is. But let's look at the crux of the matter now. Funding yeah. is a big issue. The government is saying they don't have the resources. Because if you're talking about increasing mm. you know, the salaries, we're going to be looking at a lot, about 560 billion uh, you know, expenditure mm. for the government. And so uh, shouldn't we begin to consider this as you know, a reality, especially when we yeah. see what's going on in our economy? Uh, I agree that we need to generously fund education. Because without funding education, the responsibility that the education human sector have to the Nigerian people is a difficult to make, to meet. But the truth of the matter today is that the country is bankrupt. And when the country is bankrupt, the alternative is to to meet the obligations or whatever monetary request ASU is making. Is either to merely print money and give to ASU to do whatever they want to do, which at the end of the day lead to inflation, or other sectors of the Nigerian economy and society will be shut down to satisfy household demand. That is why I have recommended. In fact, I wrote an article in the nation newspaper saying the household people, as intelligent people, as one of the smartest people in our midst, to concentrate their energy on good governance. And that when they concentrate on their energy on good governance, and we have the right people in power who are able to generate um, uh, income, value, develop the economy, and manage the financial of the country full that place. Then a lot of resources will be free, not just to develop the educational sector, but also infrastructure and health and what have you. But as it is today, the answer people are not looking that direction. Which area of our life not to run down? You have just mentioned the aviation sector this morning. Look at what it costs the aviation fuel per liter. Look at how airfare has skyrocketed because of the challenges in that sector. The state of our roads, most of these places, are dilapidated. The soldiers have to put on the battle front. We have to buy equipment and all that. Also provide the special allowance for them and also feed them. All this is cost money and it is the only resources that will uh, uh, you are also looking at to find the funds for this. Oil as it were is no longer selling the way it is sell in the international market. Because people are looking at alternative energy. So if I were asked to, if they would be honest with themselves, they should concentrate their energy on making sure that good people get into government. When good people get into government, all areas of our life could and will be adequately funded. Because when people who are good in government, they will be better and better managers of resources. What I see is doing today for me is just knocking ahead against the world, which is not likely to bring any results. In fact, at the end of the day, if you bring about a mutual disruption, not just the ASU, not just the university system, and also the people in government. Or maybe we should think of, you know, selling of our universities to... to no, I don't uh, think so. If you sell off the universities, then uh, the poor people in our midst will not be able to access university or higher education. What will be left will be merely private universities. There are a very creative way by which we can manage the universities. There are a very creative way by which we can manage all the research institutes. Don't forget that the research institutes are doing the same thing that the universities are doing. They also do teaching. But all the research institutes are also run down. Go to Koko Research, go to Nihos, go to Siri Research in Badegi, go to Sugar uh, Research Institute in Noma. They are all run down and dilapidated because of poor funding. But there are no activities in there. They only draw salaries and then they go back up to sleep. So we need to really begin to talk about good governance. 
rather than the quantum of money that goes into the, into the pocket of individuals as that is an emolument. Quite interesting, Tunde Kolo. Let's move on to some other stories. And uh, this ASU issue is one that will continue to um, uh, be in the conversation until the, the, the strike is, is suspended at least. And hopefully that uh, Utah's agreement can be signed today so that we can have the students go back to school. But some uh, Nigerians feel that um, the federal government now beginning to uh, yield to some of ASU's demands is only a ploy to uh, make sure students go back to school during the election period so they don't vote. <laughs> you know, I've leave some comments this morning. <laughs> my way, my way some people are not taking it. These are the same people who say, no, federal uh, government end our strike. Uh, now it's... I do hand, <laughs> yeah, I do hand is a workshop for the table to do whatever it wants on this on the side. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, um, the Daily Trust has its lead story talking about aviation fuel. Um, no respite for operators as aviation fuel hits 903 naira. What are your thoughts on that? You know, Nigerians are shunning air travel over high cost of tickets. I mean, we're told uh, Abuja, Abuja can cost 160k. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who used to manage an aviation who was an MD of an aviation industry from 20 years ago. You know, I found back at the 20 years ago that he was managing one of the airlines. His complaint to me most of the time was the high cost of aviation fuel. Now, when they did a survey, the cost of aviation fuel in Nigeria is the highest in the whole of the West African region and one of the highest throughout the whole of Africa. So, it isn't a thing that we can today. The cost is not perfect. And when aviation fuel is that expensive, cost of maintaining aircraft too, because we don't have any aircraft maintenance anger in Nigeria. It also be very expensive. I think the only one that exists is in Ethiopia and I think maybe South Africa. So, what is the cause of all this? Our inability to refine petroleum products in Nigeria. If we have refineries that are functional, they will refine petroleum products not just for aviation, but also for automobile and some of these other ancillary uh, machinery uh, areas. But we've been unable to do that. The second one is that uh, our airlines are one of the most unpatriotic people that we can never think about. When they import this aviation fuel, rather than make simple profit, they make profit in a compound manner. I mean, and sometimes you will not blame them because they import some of these things using foreign exchange. And before, and because they cannot get the foreign exchange through the CBN, they go to the black market to buy. And when they get to the black market to buy, the cost of buying from the black market will be passed over to the consumer. And that is why we are moving in this cycle of, uh, of uh, inability to have a very viable and effective aviation uh, industry. Of course, you also not forget what happened when the House of Red was proving the subsidy thing in the in the petroleum sector, there are some of our allies who import uh, two ship loads of uh, petroleum products and they will go to the um, NNPC and say it is 20 ship loads that they have imported. And then they will now be asking the government to pay them the subsidy for that uh, 20 cargoes of a uh, of, uh, of, uh, fuel. So it's a spiral of uh, corruption and ineffectiveness in government. Those are the bottom line we need to break the cycle, what I call the cycle of poverty in Nigeria, that we really require to, to, to break. And if we are going to break it, it is only good governance that can guarantee that. All right. Uh, today, Kola Wale, thank you so much. We have to go now, and I wish we had more time to continue this conversation. It's quite unfortunate, uh, as learned as yeah. we are, as a people. I mean, if you look at Nigeria, we constantly say that we're blessed with... Uh, human resource and uh, material resources and what have you. 
very knowledgeable people, but it feels like our decision at the end of the day has kept us where we are. We constantly have uh, elected persons or we have people who are running the affairs of the country. And the result is something contrary to who we are. And it just breaks my heart, you know, every other time. I mean, look at that. And so um, you look at how much we're spending on things, the cost of running governance. You look at the fact that we have the resources. Why are we not taking advantage of it? We have the brains. Why are we not paying attention to the things that matter? If we say that our education is the bedrock of the nation, then why are we acting differently? Why is it different? I really don't know what will happen. Maybe we'll constantly pray and hope that there's a miracle and things change. I don't know when that would happen, but fingers are crossed and we're hopeful. We'll stay right here uh, on The Breakfast, but we have to take a break now. When we return, we'll continue with more interesting conversations. Please stay with us.